Hi everyone, it is your favorite therapist. Today we are going to talk about a really important topic and that topic is da -da 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 -da, communication styles. Yes, communication styles. Did you know that there are so many different communication styles out there in the world? Yeah, there are. And it's really important for us to actually know these styles because then we can identify our own. Some communication styles make it really easy for us to communicate, meaning we can talk to someone without disrespecting them, which promotes effective communication, it promotes a healthy relationship, and it decreases, it decreases conflict. While other styles might do the complete opposite. And it's really important for us to know these different styles because we can develop an assertive communication style based off of these teachings. The good thing is that if you feel like your communication style isn't the best, you can always practice and you can shift your mindset and master a new style. So if you feel like it might be a little bit indirect, but you want it to be assertive, just practice at home. You can practice with a friend, with a family member, with a colleague, with someone you trust, or you can even practice in the mirror. Yes, you can practice in the mirror. That is possible as well. So what I'm going to talk about today is the seven different types of communication styles. The first is assertive, then we have aggressive, then we have passive aggressive, then we have the submissive style, next the manipulative style, following that we have the direct, and finally the indirect. What we're going to start off with is the assertive communication style. Now what I know or what I know about assertive communication is that it is the most highly recommended style out there to use. However, a lot of people actually don't use it. I know it's crazy, right? No one uses it that much. Yeah, it's really true, but that's okay because that's why I'm giving you this knowledge. So you can take it and share it with everyone else. To be assertive really means that you respect yourself and other people. And respect is really important because it feeds into how you communicate. Now, this allows you to communicate your thoughts, your feelings, to be open with someone, to be specific, and to really find a healthier way to achieve what you would want to achieve, which would be making sure your needs are met. A set of communication means making a choice, taking responsibility for them, asking directly what needs need to be met, expressing your feelings using I statements. Yes, that I feel like I would need this to move forward and accepting the possibility of a disagreement. That's important because sometimes we feel like if we're assertively communicating our needs, someone is going to be receptive to them and they're going to accept them. Where that might not be the case, although you communicated what you needed, the person can say no to it, or you can get a compromise from it, which is even more beneficial. By being assertive, you are really likely to be successful with other people in other relationships. And that's why that's the most recommended style. Next, we have aggressive. Now, aggressive is one where it involves someone winning at someone else's expense. So what that means is that someone feels that their needs aren't being met or that their needs are more important than other people. Now, the problem with that is that there's no respect in there. So because there's no respect, it might not end up the way that we want or there's going to be a loser in the end. So aggressive communication could be using frightening, loud, threatening, or hostile voice, or being in that type of environment. So the posture of it, the person can seem like they're bigger than the other person, they're better, they're tough, and the gestures that are made are really bad. And this could also be really intimidating for someone. It could feel like a bully in a sense. Like someone is bullying other people in order to achieve their goals. Now, many people try their best to avoid this confrontation, but we do have some people 
who will do what they want or do what they feel need to be done in order to win the confrontation instead of just ending the confrontation. If this continues to happen, that will lead to someone being defensive, feeling hurt, feeling afraid, and that's never a good place to be in. So I would recommend trying not to be in this communication style because these results can end up with violence. It can end up with just arguing in a nasty manner and nothing gets solved in the end. Even though it seems like someone has won, both parties ultimately lose because of this. Next, we have the passive aggressive style. Now this style, a lot of people could relate to knowing what this style is because it means that a person is like really passive on the surface level, but indirectly acting out out of frustration and anger behind the scenes. And people who have this style are often indirectly ag aggressive or complaining or patronizing or devious. They are what some people may consider to be gossipy. Or another term for that would be two-faced, which is being nice in front of someone's face, but talking behind their back. And that's really hard because that creates conflict in a relationship as well. This is because we don't know who to trust. The person might not know if they can trust this individual with a passive aggressive attitude. And people on the receiving end of that would feel, you know, hurt. They would feel confused. They would feel angry. They would feel resentful and resentful is a strong word, but that is something that they would feel because they don't know if they can trust that person. They don't know if they can come to that person and share their thoughts or feelings without it being taken and, and used to benefit that other person. This style sometimes does get what you what you want it, but in my personal thought, both parties still lose because the lack of trust is there and boundaries have been crossed. Um, but if you feel like you're here, that's okay because we can figure out how to get you to the assertive communication style. Next, we have the submissive style. And the submissive style is for people who try to please other people. And, you know, we call them people pleasers, but... They really try to avoid conflict. Their goal isn't to be in, in, a, in a tension type of state. Their goal is to make peace. And with that, they will typically put someone else's needs before their own. They won't contribute as much because, you know, they might not feel like they're good enough and they might feel that other people have more rights than them. So that is really disheartening because that also impacts their self-esteem and it impacts how their needs are being met. In this type of style, your needs are not being met because no one understands what your needs are if you don't communicate. This will really leave someone feeling inferior to someone else. This leaves them feeling like a doormat to someone else. And really, to be honest, this person might just apologize, apologize and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And they'll follow the other person instead of following themselves. And if you feel like you're here, there are multiple ways for us to also get you out of this type of style. Because we don't want you to feel guilty over something that you didn't do and something that was out of your control. We want you to be able to own your boundaries and own your power and assert what your power is, but to also make sure that other person feels okay. Now we're going to go into the manipulative style. Yes, manipulation, right? Calculation, someone seems like they're scheming or they're doing something in order to benefit themselves. Yes, those are all a part of this type of style. People who have a manipulative communication style can really be skilled at controlling someone or influencing someone for their own advantage. Have you had someone like that? Do you feel like you're that type of person? These are questions that I want you to just reflect on once you finish the video. These people have underlying messages. They are trying to find an effective method to get their way to make sure that they win in the end. It's similar to the aggressive communication style, 
but there's a strategic way of this type of person getting their way and manipulation can be effective but like any other style it comes at a cost people who do this do not have regards for other people they don't really care about their feelings or their emotions they're focused on what they are going to win what is the end goal for me what am I going to get in the end that's what my main focus is so really what happens with this type of style is they might not ask questions directly they will really try to guilt someone have you ever heard of emotionally manipulating someone some people do it unconsciously where others do it in order to benefit themselves people on the receiving end of this will feel guilty they would feel ready to help in any way they may start to develop feelings of being hurt being frustrated being resentful being irritated all of those negative feelings would start to come up and it's really hard to know where someone with this communication style stands but even more so for those who love these type of people it makes it harder to work with them and to to be a part of their lives because it could go one way or it can go another way it's really about what this person wants and what their goal is in the end so now that we got through that we're going to talk about direct communication style and this is when the speaker is at the forefront is telling you what they need to tell you there is no masking this message this person wants to use clear language so that they can be understood on what their needs are so what this happens is that sometimes the person saying the direct message they have a culture where they can determine the right way to use this information but the person on the receiving end will be able to know what they're saying without having to beat around the bush. So if I said, I need some space, I'm just gonna tell you I need some space. That's, that's what I'm gonna say. If I said, I can help and I can be a part of it, that's what I'm gonna say. However, however, okay, sometimes being direct can also be harsh. Now, with assertive communication, we're being respectful, right? I talked about that quality. With directness, sometimes we're not putting that respect in there. Sometimes we're just saying what we need and we're just getting it out the way without considering how the other person feels. And we always have to consider how the other person feels if you want to maintain a healthy relationship. So direct can be good. But in order for direct to be good, we need to add some other qualities in there to make it effective so that we can consider it to have effective communication. The last thing we're going to talk about is the complete opposite of direct, okay? People who have this style do not do what people with direct do, which is tell it like it is. So this is considered the indirect communication style, okay? And indirect means that it is so hard to determine what this person needs and what they want. We can't determine the needs of this person if they don't know what their needs are. So it's kind of like a puzzle. You're trying to decipher what's being said, what's happening. Hard to know what they want to achieve with this. And especially if you're not accustomed to this type of group, it makes it 10 times harder. It's like looking at a jigsaw puzzle and trying to get all those little pieces to fit. Sometimes the facial expressions could be subtle. Sometimes you might not be approved by a certain person. There are just so many things that can go wrong with an indirect communication style. But more importantly, the person on the receiving end of this style may not necessarily understand what is wrong and they might end up thinking that you just don't like the person for no particular reason so have you ever been through a situation where it's like i don't know why this person doesn't like me i don't get it that person probably had an indirect communication style so the way that i see it is it can cause a lot of problems especially if that's your friend that's your family member or even more so, that's your colleague and you guys have something to work on together. Overall, I've given a synopsis, I would say, on all of these different styles. 
I think that sometimes we can start off with one style, but certain situations can impact how we communicate as well because emotions do get involved when we're talking with people because we're human. But the good thing is that recognizing these seven different styles will ultimately help you with your communication overall in life. So if you feel like at work you can assertively communicate, but with the family member you might have an indirect communication, let's practice on how we can change that indirect communication to a more assertive communication. What would that look like for you? What would you want the results to be with that family member? And vice versa, right, when it comes to just life in general. What I want you guys to do is think about these tools and these skills and consider what you feel like your communication style is. And from there, consider what your goal is to have with that specific communication style. Does the current style you have match the goal that you have? If it doesn't, that's okay. Let's work on that. Once you have an idea on what you want, in regards to communication and effective relationships, I then want you to start to practice that. How can you practice effectively communicating with someone if you don't feel comfortable talking about it in front of someone? Feel free to do it in the mirror. That's what I do. I love mirror talks. I'm a huge fan of it. And practice, practice, practice. What I want you to do also is like, comment, subscribe, and really comment below. I really want to hear any stories you have about communication, how you have, you know, improved your communication, what your goals are for the future after hearing this clip in this video. So thank you guys. Take care.